Thanks very much for that. Well, uh, we have Param Desai, who's the pharma analyst at Pravudas Leela, they're joining in to discuss the entire hospital space, including Aster DM, which is down around 7 odd percent. Uh, well, Param, hi, welcome to the show. Uh, Aster DM, now that uh, you know the likely sellers Olympus, uh, they've probably exited entirely from Aster DM. Uh, how would you read that piece of news? Yeah, if you see uh, uh, the in the recent last 12 to 18 months, we have seen a lot of private equity guys uh, who have invested in the past have basically exited. And there has been equal amount of interest uh, from the domestic as well as the FIs to participate in the space. So this is also one of the bin case and uh, we have seen the entire block been getting subscribed. So, so uh, uh, positive from a, from a space perspective. Uh, as, as I said, in the, in the, in the recent past, uh, we have seen series of uh, PE guys existing and but at the same time, a lot of domestic mutual funds and as well as the FIs are being participating in the space. Okay. All right. So that's an Aster DM. But how would you now probably look at the business on a fundamental basis, considering that it has the pure play India business, uh, which investors would now be looking at? Right. So, uh, uh, as you rightly said, uh, they have exited uh, the GCC part of the business. So now the complete focus will be on the India business. And in the last two, three years, the India business have really scaled up uh, pretty well uh, from almost uh, 300 crore kind of a bit 200. Now, I think they should be closing in based on our numbers around 600 crore plus. And given that they are also been like other hospital, uh, the state hospital companies, they are also been expanding and they also intend to add another 1700 beds in the next uh, three to four years. Uh, they have been also been taking steps uh, to improve the margins from the current level of 20 percent. So the growth levers are pretty much in, in, intact uh, for Astridium. We remain very constructive uh, at this price point and we see around 18 to 20 percent kind of EBITDA growth in the name in the next uh, say two to three years. Well, you're pretty constructive on all the other names as well. Uh, you know, your picks are up uh, for our viewers on the screen. There is Apollo Hospitals, there is Jupiter Life, there is Max as well, a bunch of them. Um, at these prices and a lot of these stocks already having seen a run up, do you see further room for growth here in the very near to medium term or these are all long term bets that everyone's looking at in terms of industry consolidation and under penetration and all of that, the thesis that people talk about when they do speak about the hospital space? Right. If you see the space uh, had gone into a capex uh, cycle between say 16 to 18 and benefit of that was visible between 2022 or last two, three years, most of these guys have not, uh, companies have not done any capex, uh, or have not added any beds uh, largely. But now as, as I speak, uh, most of these uh, hospital companies are now into new capex cycle. But the good part is uh, the capex which has been coming up is not entirely greenfield. They are, it's a combination of a greenfield, uh, brownfield and some of the inorganic uh, acquisitions also uh, most of the hospital guys have been aggressive. So the next say, three to five years, if I take an horizon, all these companies, most of these hospital companies are doubling their capacity and that would be one of the major driver uh, of the growth. So we, we are positive, as I said, uh, last two years, the growth has been pretty strong and we see the growth momentum to continue uh, on the back of the addition of the new bed addition, what these uh, companies have been doing. Okay. <clears throat> Well, uh, you know, a couple of these hospital stocks are down today, Param. You know, Apollo is down around a percent and a half. We have Max, which is under pressure slightly as well in today's trade. Um, you know, the government is probably the, the date to respond to the Supreme Court with regards to the pricing scenario, which was brought up around a month ago by the Supreme Court, is nearing. Uh, what is your sense in terms of what could probably play out for these private hospitals? when it comes to this issue of standardization of rates? So, uh, uh, realistically, it's very difficult to standardize the rates as there are a lot of complexity and a lot of variables are involved among the, um, the private hospital companies. The quality of services differ, the kind of uh, services they offer, they differ. Uh, so, it will be difficult to standardize the rate uh, uh, across across the deal. So, uh, in our assessment, it's realistically, it's uh, uh, very difficult to implement uh, standardization of the rates. In the past also, we have seen a couple of states been uh, uh, getting, uh, uh, trying to implement uh, uh, such such rates and it was, uh, they couldn't do so. And as I said, the private market, private hospital companies do enjoy 60-65% of the market share. Mm -hmm. So it would be difficult to, 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 to have the standardization of the rates. 
So now the Department of Health needs to uh, get back to the reply uh, to the Supreme Court within in the next say, two to three weeks of time. So we could hear some kind of news flow uh, back and forth uh, and there could be some volatility uh, with respect to that. Uh, but uh, realistically, we, we, we see the standard uh, ration of the rates is not a, a feasible solution. All right, standardization of rates is not a feasible solution. Uh, which among the other players are all best placed? Uh, there is some supply that has come in from AstroDM. Any others that you expect would, you know, give you larger chunks in terms of uh, market supply going forward? Uh, so, honestly, uh, in the last 12 to 18 months, we have seen most of the PE guys uh, uh, have exited the, the hospital names. So, barring one or two names, I think uh, there are not not much any PE guys still still invested uh, in the hospital uh, thing. So, in that sense, I think the supply will be limited to that extent, barring say to a couple of names. So, does that mean that uh, lack of supply would uh, cause abnormally high gains in all the hospital space now going forward? Yeah, so there could be near term, there could be some consolidation we may see in the space given the recent news from the Supreme Court and all this stuff. But from a numbers perspective, we do see around 15% plus EBITDA growth for the next two, three years. It's pretty much sustainable in nature. And as I said, one of the key drivers is the new bed addition, what they're doing. Plus the the the, 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 the demand scenario, the, the tailwinds continues to be there in the space. The lack of infrastructure and in the kind of insurance penetration has been going up. I think the, 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 the absorption of the new bed addition, we remain very constructive. Okay. Just quickly, if in case uh, there is, you know, a sort of price uh, control which comes through, we don't know if it's going to be extreme, we don't know if it's going to be moderate or mild at this point, how much do you think stocks could probably correct if in case it's a mild price control, moderate price control and maybe even an extreme? And which company or which hospital do you think is likely to be most impacted on account of its payer profile? If you see 50 to 60 percent, uh, 60 percent of the payer mix is generally comes from the cash plus international, where you have the kind of pricing power that the hospital companies do have in their hands. So if, if there is a restriction or if there is a restrictiveness in terms of pricing power, then your 50 to 60 percent of your of your businesses for most of the hospital companies will get impacted, depending upon what kind of uh, uh, the standard ration of rates of this thing gets implemented. To, to that extent, yes, if if the if it's pretty severe in nature, it would be negative and it could have impact the multiple also across the names. The it, it's not that one or two company will. It's across the space the the impact will be there if if the severity is on a higher side. All right. Thanks a lot, Param, for joining in, giving us your view on the entire hospital space. Uh, constructive on a bunch of names. Believe that the capex cycle, which is still underway is a function of both green and brownfield and that would lead to operating leverage going ahead as well. But uh, with that, it's time for the first break that we take on our show. We have a big announcement as we do that. We're launching CNBC TV 18's first ever live personal finance webinar. It's called CNBC TV 18 Accelerate Personal Finance Handbook. It's with Shonia Shinoy, where she will be joined by three well-known experts on Saturday, 11th May, 9 a.m. onwards. We'll be diving into everything you need to know to master your finances and learn how to grow your wealth, be it insurance, tax saving, managing your portfolio, retirement planning. There's so much to learn and lots to do. Whether you're in your 20s, 30s or even 40s, this live webinar is for you. So we have limited seats. Don't miss this chance. Register now. All the details on your screen. There's a QR code that you need to scan or maybe log on to CNBCTV18.com. We hope to see you on the 11th of May.